A cover-up of the deadly coronavirus was only the beginning of the cruelty. China's response to the coronavirus can only be described as vile. This is China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. Now, this may shock you, but it turns out an authoritarian regime that's killed millions of its own people over the years doesn't really care if people die from an epidemic, not if the bigger threat is to its own rule. The Chinese Communist Party spent the first crucial weeks of the Wuhan coronavirus outbreak trying to cover it up, which meant more people got sick. And that's bad because it makes the party look bad like that international media are calling it China's governance failure. Even more humiliating, Chinese people are actually praising Japan's response to the virus and the help they've given China. And that is impressive given the Chinese Communist Party's decades of propaganda about how terrible the Japanese are. But don't worry, there's still something the Chinese Communist Party can hate even more than Japan, and that is America. China's foreign ministry is accusing the U.S. of not helping with the coronavirus and spreading fear and chaos by uh, evacuating its citizens from Wuhan and instituting a travel ban on foreign nationals coming in from China, just like many other countries, including Japan. And while Chinese state-run media accused the U.S. of not offering help, that's a lie. The U.S. had offered to send CDC experts to help in Wuhan. That was back in early January, when officials were still trying to pretend things were fine. China rejected the U.S.'s offer. Now U.S. experts will be joining a WHO delegation to help with the coronavirus. Meanwhile, the Chinese central government is demanding that local Wuhan officials round up everyone who may be infected and force them to go to quarantine centers. A Beijing official has demanded that city investigators should go to each home to check the temperatures of every resident, and that during these wartime conditions, there must be no deserters or they will be nailed to the pillar of historical shame forever. It should be noted that the quarantine centers don't actually have nearly enough beds for everyone, and many of them don't have enough doctors or supplies or even basic conditions to prevent the spread of infection. Although mentioning that might also get you nailed to that pillar of historical shame. Here's a photo from inside a Wuhan gymnasium that's being converted into a quarantine center. That does not look like a good isolation ward to me. And anyone trying to get real news out from Wuhan is being targeted. One citizen journalist named Fang Bin spent days traveling to hospitals, documenting overcrowded conditions and a lot of dead bodies. Then the police showed up at his door. Well, technically they were just a group of men in hazmat suits saying they had to see if he was infected. Obviously to test if he had the coronavirus, these men had to break into his home and take away his laptop, desktop and cell phone. And then they took him to a police station as is common procedure for well-trained medical staff. The police accused him of taking money from foreign forces and threatened to quarantine him for creating fear. Yeah, somehow I don't think that's a quarantine you'd ever come back from. Luckily, others quickly spread word of Fang Bin's detention online and he was released. But beyond citizen journalists, there are also doctors who have spoken out. Dr. Li Wenliang was one of the eight doctors detained by Wuhan police after he warned other colleagues about the coronavirus. His mistake? Speaking the truth while the Communist Party was trying to cover it up. Police let him go after he signed a statement that he would no longer commit unlawful acts. Unfortunately, none of that matters now because he died this week after contracting the coronavirus he tried to expose. He leaves behind his pregnant wife and five-year-old child. But the tragedy doesn't end there. After initial reports from state-run media that Dr. Li had died, there was a furious backlash on Chinese social media. And then Dr. Li was suddenly no longer dead. Instead, the hospital said he was in critical condition and on life support. 
There were reports that Dr. Lee had been put on life support hours after he had already passed away due to the backlash. Hours later, after the hospital finally announced his death, the online anger continued. People posted images like this one with Dr. Lee's mask replaced by barbed wire. They used references to Les Mis and Chernobyl to mourn Dr. Lee, and hashtags like, I want freedom of speech. And after that was censored, we demand freedom of speech. They even posted protest videos on TikTok. But don't worry, the Chinese Communist Party knows how to handle this. First, control the online reaction, and then send officials to investigate Dr. Lee's death. The only question is, who will be the scapegoat? And it's not just doctors and citizen journalists the party is going after. They've turned anyone from Wuhan into pariahs, turning neighbors against neighbors. In one case, authorities used metal poles to barricade a family that had been to Wuhan. And if you're wondering how that family gets food, they rely on neighbors to lower something down to their rear balcony window. And some local officials are even offering bounties to people who turn in Wuhan residents who are hiding in other cities. As the New York Times says, across the country, the response from local authorities often resembles the mass mobilizations of the Mao era. And I wish I could say that was the worst of it, but I found with the Chinese Communist Party, the worst can always get worse. Check out this story. Authorities quarantined the father of a boy who had cerebral palsy. So the father posted on Chinese social media platform Weibo, appealing for help and explaining that his son had been left alone without food or water. Well, that didn't go so well. Without adequate care, the boy died. Two local officials were fired in connection to this case, but this is what always happens. Systemic corruption leads to tragedy, and the Communist Party tries to push the blame on local officials, while the ultimate source of the problem remains untouched. Meanwhile, the Communist Party for more than a week denied Taiwan's requests to evacuate its citizens from mainland China, since, you know, they don't allow Taiwan to have their own citizens because they consider Taiwan to be a part of China. But finally, on February 3rd, a charter flight was arranged, but not through the Taiwanese government, because the Communist Party can't admit there's a separate Taiwanese government. Instead, the flight was arranged through a Taiwanese businessman. It was supposed to get the most vulnerable people out first, frail and elderly Taiwan citizens. At least, that's who was on the flight manifest. But it turns out, dozens of the passengers who actually boarded the plane were not people with urgent needs, but instead the spouses and children of wealthy Taiwanese business people. There are also reports that one person added to the flight was already confirmed to have the coronavirus. As you can imagine, people in Taiwan are a little upset about this. Speaking of Taiwan, the Chinese Communist Party is using its position in the United Nations to turn the deadly outbreak into a political weapon against Taiwan. The World Health Organization is a UN body. At Beijing's behest, the WHO has given Taiwan the pariah treatment. The WHO has held two emergency meetings since the coronavirus outbreak. Taiwan wasn't permitted to attend. Yes, the Chinese Communist Party is using the coronavirus to play politics. So it really undermines the credibility of the WHO when its director praised the seriousness with which China is taking this outbreak, especially the commitment from top leadership and the transparency they have demonstrated. I think Taiwan's foreign ministry spokeswoman explained it a little better. We have seen the Chinese government rudely and unreasonably pressuring Taiwan on the international stage and putting political considerations above human health. We have seen that the disease has no national boundaries and epidemic prevention around the world should have no loopholes, so that they are putting political considerations over people's health and safety. This basically is extremely vile. Extremely vile? Sounds about right. So what do you think about how the Chinese Communist Party has responded to the coronavirus? Tell me what you think in the comments below. And as you may have heard me mention, YouTube has refused to run ads on most of our episodes about the coronavirus, 
which means we can't afford to keep covering it. Except for one thing. We have the support of viewers like you, who I call the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army. Through your contributions on the crowdfunding website Patreon, China Uncensored can keep paying our staff and our expenses so we can keep letting you know about important China issues like a deadly global pandemic. So as a thank you to supporters, I answer questions from them at the end of some of my episodes. Today's question comes from Logan. Is there any truth to the drones with disinfectant story I've been hearing about? Wow, you know what? It's true. According to Chinese state-run media, they're using drones to spray disinfectant. I guess in China, chemtrails are real. Drones are actually being used in a lot of ways to combat the coronavirus. In some cases, drones are delivering groceries to people in quarantine villages. And my favorite state-run media, the Global Times, reposted online videos of drones yelling at people to go home. Some of the drones were used by local traffic police. Others, like this one, were from a local social media influencer working with his village Communist Party committee. I mean, that's only marginally less scary than actually getting sick from the coronavirus. Thanks for your question, Logan. And if you'd like to join the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army, head over to patreon.com slash China Uncensored to learn more. Thanks for watching China Uncensored. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.